morning all i am hanita hanif first semester mtech structural engineering and construction management department of civil engineering snit ad today i am here to present about my topic strain gauge bridge these are the contents what is a strain gauge a strain gauge is a device used to measure strain on an object when external force is applied on an object due to which there is a deformation occurs in the shape of the object this deformation in the shape is both compressive or tensile is called strain and it is measured by the strain gauge this is strain gauge and strain gauge bridge in the case of strain gauge consisting of gauge resistant wires and a gauge backing system what is strain gauge bridge Strain measurement requires accurate measurement of very small changes in resistance. To measure such small changes in resistance, strain gauges are always always used in a bridge configuration within a voltage or current excitation source. The general Wheatstone bridge illustrated below consisting four resistive amps with the excitation voltage V is applied across the bridge. From the figure, we can see that V A B equal to R one by R one plus R two into V. And V A D equal to R four by R three plus R four into V. Then E can be calculated V A B minus V A D. That is R one R three minus R two R four by R one plus R two into R three plus R four into V. For the bridge to be balanced initially, E equal to zero. Then R one R three equal to R two R four. For an incremental change in resistance. Change in potential will be delta E is equal to V into R1 R2 by R1 plus R2 the whole square into delta R1 by R1 minus delta R2 by R2 plus delta R3 by R3 minus delta R4 by R4. Then strain gauge bridge circuit shows a measured stress by the degree of discrepancies and uses a voltmeter in strength of bridge to provide an accurate measurement of that imbalance. A simple Wheatstone bridge consisting three different ways. That is called a bridge, half bridge, or full bridge. A full bridge will have four of its gauges active, and half bridge consisting of two of its gauges active and two use preserved value resistor. The quarter bridge will have only one gauge, and rest of resistor will be in preserved value. This figure represents quarter bridge strain gauges. In case of quarter bridge circuit has a strain gauge in one amp and resistors in rest of them. Using equation two, the signal output will be delta E is equal to V into R1 R2 by R1 plus R2 the whole square into delta R1 by R1, where delta R1 equal to delta R S plus delta R T. That is, delta R S equal to change in resistance due to strain and delta R T equal to change in resistance due to temperature variation. Then Consider a cantilever beam pasted with strain gauge subject to transverse loading. The strain gauge ridge will have both strain and temperature effect. A single strain gauge in a Wheatstone bridge quarter bridge circuit cannot eliminate the temperature effect. With no force applied to the test specimen, both strain gauges have equal resistance and bridge circuit to be balanced. Second is half bridge strain gauges. Half bridge circuit have two strain gauges connected in adjacent amps and resistors in remaining amps. Then output signal will be delta E equal to V into R1 R2 by R1 plus R2 the whole square into delta R1 by R1 minus delta R2 by R2. <coughs> Consider a cantilever beam pasted with two strain gauges subject to transverse loading. According to beam theory, the top surface gauge one and bottom surface gauge two in compression. Therefore, the temperature effect is same in both the gauges. Thus, delta R one equal to delta R S plus delta R T and delta R two equal to minus delta R S plus delta R T. Then the equations become delta E equal to V into R one R two by R one plus R two the whole square into two into delta R S by R one. Thus, a half bridge. Circuit amplifies the strain output from the specimen and also eliminates the effect due to temperature variation. Then, when a downward force is applied to the free end of specimen, it will bend downward, stretching gauge one and compressing gauge two at the same time. 
by using two strain gauges in the bridge the effect of temperature can be avoided because the temperature changes are identical in the two gauges so the ratio of the resistance does not change and the voltage v0 does not change and effects of temperature changes are minimized third one is full bridge strain gauges the sensitivity of circuit can be increased by making four of the amps of the bridge act as strain gauges and mounting two gauges in tension and two gauges in compression the signal output is given by delta e v into R1 R2 by R1 plus R2 the whole square into delta R1 by R1 minus delta R2 by R2 plus delta R3 by R3 minus delta R4 by R4. That is, consider a cantilever beam specimen pasted with four strain gauges subjected to transverse loading. According to beam theory, the top surface gauge 1 3 in tension and bottom surface gauge 2 4 in compression. Therefore, the temperature effect in same in all strain gauges. Thus, we get delta e equal to v into r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 the whole square into 4 into delta rs by r1. Thus a full bridge circuit amplifies the strain output from the specimen and also eliminates the effect to the temperature variation. Then the advantages and disadvantages and application of various bridges. First one simple quarter bridge, easy installation, normal and bending strain are superimposed, temperature effects not automatically compensated. Strain measurement on tension or compression bar, strain measure on bending, bending beam. In case of half bridge, temperature effects are well compensated, separation of normal and bending strain. Application is strain measurement on a bending beam. Then third one, full bridge. Separation of normal and bending strain, high output signal and temperature effects are well compensated. Then application is strain measurement on bending beam. Final summary, the bridge is used for measuring the low resistance value precisely. Used to measure force or pressure, high accuracy and sensitivity, strain gauge resistance changes are typically measured in a bridge circuit to allow for precise measurement of the small resistance changes and to provide compensation for resistance variation due to the temperature. These are the references I referred. Thank you.